So it's been a, a long journey. Um, me and uh, Michael Ginger have go back more than 30 years. We've started working together at UNM printmaking department. And I guess we had to go through this whole life experience to say. Uh, so we came together again. Um, and here we are uh, on a joint venture. I think we're putting all of our marbles into something that we always believed in. And that is how to conceive large surfaces, pictorial surfaces, that can be alternated maybe in one of the most traditional I would say on one side and uh, with the greatest heritage and as, as an art expression as we understand the world of printmaking and sure enough you know we all think of printmaking as something more intimate when we hear the word print etching lithography, woodcut, etc. We always think of something of a medium smaller format. But the truth of the matter is, it is a language, a discipline that allows us to conceive large scale pieces. And pretty much that's what the, the show is all about. Uh, although the exhibiting pieces are small um, in terms of size and, and format, the idea is that we can, from a more uh, casual way, in a, in a coffee house, be able to walk around and think about how can we conceive these smaller drawings, basically, into something bigger. And that entails something that uh, of a potence, the potential of changing the world. This is what the whole idea about art, uh, specifically visual arts, and within that realm, the whole notion of printmaking, which is a form of reverse thinking. In other words, where you have to think first what you're going to do last. This small step can allow you to conceive something that is beyond our scale. Uh, and that's what we're working on right now. How we can take from history, take from the evolution of human beings, the evolution of language, the complexity of language, and bring it to a different scale. So I welcome you to stop for a moment and observe all this work that uh, has been the work of all of our lives what we have explored in the different hemispheres this is why we speak of two hemispheres and language the language is only one the graphic language a graphic language that in the case of animistic cultures as you can observe uh, it predates uh, our modern history and also it is something adjacent to our geology the relationship of the sky with the earth with mother earth earth being a very old planet um, more than half the age of the universe so we're talking about seven billion years so the earth is older than a lot of the stars that we see in the sky and that means that there is a connection between the stars the movement of the stars and the geological forms of the earth the tectonic layers so this animistic people they walked around walked about and we're able to make those connections. Now we're trying to revive them through the use of second generation images. This has been the tremendous breakthrough since the days of uh, Senefelders, the inventor of lithography, and how we quickly moved into 
photography and the conjunction of both into the offset printing, which is the massive form of printing that we know until today. So here we are going back, feeding ourselves uh, into these first forms of prints that translated into hieroglyphs. Hieroglyphs understanding as hieros, sacred from the Greek, glyph, image, imprint, sacred image, which basically from an ontological point of view we are talking about the uh, genesis of the universe, a universe that was meant to be in a way where we humans have a great deal of responsibility today. This is why it's so important that we can go back and understand what motivated a lot of these people who lived, in many cases, completely isolated, to read the geological forms and relate them to the movement of the stars. That measurement of the genesis of the universe is a critical aspect that we are in a, in a collective effort to reveal through a wonderful discipline as we all know of printmaking. Thank you.